Utini! In this episode, original human Jawa Tim Donaldson tells me why he didn't join the cast of Star Wars for fame or even money. He did it simply to skive off school. Disgusting creature. This is your monthly Star Wars interview show where I talk to the unsung and occasionally well-sung heroes from a galaxy far, far away. New episodes drop on the first Tuesday of every month, so consider subscribing for that and other movie-related content. Right then, to business. Most of us who accept Star Wars isn't real. Would associate Tatooine in A New Hope with Tunisia in North Africa. But when production moved back to America and pickup shots were required, including for this scene with Tim, the otherworldly Death Valley National Park was chosen as a cheaper, more local option. Tim, the son of a park ranger, actually lived in the park, and what started out as a regular day for him at Death Valley Elementary School soon became one that would eventually change his life forever. They just showed up one day and and asked if they could borrow eight kids for a couple of days of filming. So you were five years old? That is correct, yeah. I turned five in, in November of uh, 1976, and they came to do the filming um, out of Death Valley in January of 1977. We weren't child actors, none of us were. And for me as a five-year-old, I was just happy to get out of school. Yeah. Because they already had Jawas um, from Tunisia. They, they needed us to match. And so they came in and they lined us all up and measured us. My sister still talks about it. She was a, a half inch too tall. Oh, she didn't make the cut. And you no, did. No, no. And, and she's still mad about it. Well, I'm glad you made the cut, but it, it kind of upsets me in a way, thinking about all those kids that didn't make the cut. It reminds me of, uh, you know, not being chosen for the football team at school. Well, yeah, you know, days. absolutely. Now, I don't like to say that Jowers all look the same, but they do. Fortunately, Tim was able to pick himself out of a crowd for me. So I'm on the um, left side in the middle for most of the shots. And then I'm also one of the Jawas that climbs up the stairs into the sand crawler, which was a, a flatbed trailer on set. Here's the interesting thing. Out of the eight of us, we only know where three of us are. So there's five people out there with my same story that aren't telling it yet in the public. We'd love for them to, to come out so we can get everybody back together. Yeah, Jawa reunion. Speaking of reunions, um, are you able to, because you must know that national park better than most, uh, certainly working on the film, I'm sure. Are you able to find the exact spot? Have you been back there for old time's sake? Yeah, so um, my wife and I went back there after 38 years and we went to the scenes and that was kind of a, an interesting thing. I didn't, I didn't quite remember where they were. So we went to the visitor center and, and the park rangers there, you know, kind of said, well, why, you know, why do you want to go out there? And, uh, I said, well, I was living here during the time and I was one of the Jawas that got filmed and they're like, oh my gosh, that's fantastic. And they did a little interview with me as it turns out now I'm in the Obama white house archives. Really? For that for that interview, yeah. Yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving this Star Wars appearance of yours. It didn't inspire you to pursue a career in movies. Yeah, none whatsoever. When you think of children joining the Star Wars universe, names like Jake Lloyd, Warwick Davis, and Grogu spring to mind, all of which joined a fully-fledged franchise with global appeal, which for Tim's class of Jawas was certainly not the case. My mom had written a, a letter to my grandmother that I was in some second-rate, B-grade science fiction film. Um, our teacher sat us down after we were done filming and said, hey, you kids need to slow your roll. This thing's not even going to make the box office. The lesson is, don't listen to your teachers. But with that lack of excitement and the local cinema being hundreds of miles away, Tim didn't actually see the film in a theater until 2019. I did not see it in a theater until last year. What? Yeah. But he did see it on home video a few years after original release. Panic over. But when it came out, even though you weren't able to go and see it, I mean, were you completely shut off to it? Did you have any idea of the impact it had on, on the world? I don't, I don't believe I really did. Um, it was just kind of a, a, you know, a weird way to grow up as a kid, kind of out in the sticks, you know, 
uh, pretty pretty well removed. I I got you know some Star Wars toys as as um, you know as gifts gifts for Christmas, but uh, I don't think it was really on my radar. You know, for several years, really, this hit for me. Um, Forty one years later, um, people are actually now listening to my story. I kind of actually quit telling the story for many years. Really. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it's not that I was ashamed of it or anything. It's just, nobody believed me that, you know, I said, yeah, I was in star Wars and they're like, Oh yeah. You in the credits. Well, no, <laughs> you know, there's been a recent Jawa resurgence with the Mandalorian. And I wondered what Tim made of it. So I asked him, we're back. We kicked his butt. <laughs> yeah, you did. Would you like to return? Even if I was just somebody sitting on a stool at a cantina, I'd love to be a part of it again. That'd be so much fun. Tim Donaldson, now a little tall for a Jawa. Don't forget to cyber like this video if you real world liked it. And why not check out other episodes of These Are The Actors You're Looking For? Thank you to all Patreon members and thank you for watching.